What's up out there? It is time to start looking at the Atlas tree for 324 Necropolis League. And as I was looking at this a little bit, I noticed they have made a ton of changes. I kind of thought they just maybe shoehorned some of this Necropolis stuff in here, but they've added a ton of Scarab nodes and they've added quite a bit. So I wanted to just kind of do like a little theory crafting first look at this Atlas tree thing. I don't really remember poe planner having this available at affliction league i don't remember this one out there at all i kind of th think i looked for it but i didn't find it but whatever we have one this league and i know there's a couple of things that have been changed that were rather drastic that i was kind of counting on using which is wandering path and stream of consciousness consciousness i actually liked using both of those I'm, I'm sure a lot of other people did but they've changed the tree and removed those they used to be up here i believe it was or something like that they're gone now can't even get to them and is the other one up here maybe not they've also straight up removed all the big bossing nodes that used to come off of here for uh i think there was one up here there was one for the exarch one for the eater i feel like they took away something off the eater more than just the level 85 version but anyway i wanted to talk about my planning and what I'm thinking about doing, this is not going to be a node for node this day, this second. I'm going to click this button and then I'm going to get another map and click this one. That's not how I play. I see something shiny and I put a, I go switch my tree around. What I wanted to discuss more in here is the, I, I am playing SSF. I guess I'm going to start that off. This is basically an SSF style video in the sense that I want to talk about how I'm planning on approaching the Atlas tree with all the changes we've got, the goals that I have, and things like that. So, I plan on doing three different builds for League Start. And I actually want to start all three day one, get them all up into uh, the first area, and start getting them equipped from there. I don't know which one is actually going to go through the campaign first. I may kind of raise them all up as I go, you know, do a little bit here, a little bit there. I'm not sure. They all basically use the same gear, maybe a different weapon, but they can use the same armor and boots and things like that. So whatever I find for one, I can kick off to the other. And that's why I want to start them all three at once. I don't know that I'm going to get all three into the campaign. I'll probably get at a certain point and I'll just get tired of dealing with all three of them at once, juggling them around, and I'll just take one into the campaign or the end game. I have three viable builds that can get into end game and do work. Uh, there is Bone Shatter Juggernaut. I loved it last league or this uh, during Affliction League. I will be taking that one in. That is a guaranteed I could do Exarch and Eater with that. No problem. I did that this league. So I want that one in my back pocket. I'd also, this is like a total down the road thing, but I kind of left that one. Uh, I wasn't sure if I wanted to mess with it or not, but then I found out you can do uh, accuracy stacking. And one of them is one of those builds is with a jug. So I thought, you know what, it'd be kind of cool to just have that in my back pocket. Number one, I've got bone shatter, which can do all the bossing and mapping that I did this league. Cause that's what I league started this one with. And number two, if I tink wanted to tinker around with accuracy stack, that's like the last thing I want to deal with, but I want to make, make sure that I have a build that I know can go through the mapping and go through the bossing that I want to do and bone shatter is it so that's number one caustic arrow is number two i really dig that one and if i do change any the other two builds that i'm planning on with the, the juggernaut and then the scion I'd, I'd like to try stackers with them so i want one build that i can leave alone once i get the caustic arrow build built and ready to go i'm not going to touch it uh, this league, I spent a lot of time starting off with uh, Bone Shatter Slayer, and I really didn't like the Bone Shatter Slayer all that much, so I rolled a Bone Jug and then used my Slayer on a bunch of other different things, and I started off some other build. I think I ended up with a Gladiator at some point. Like, I rolled all over the place, and I've got this Caustic Arrow build. I've got a, a Scion build. You know what I mean? I, a whole bunch of different stuff. So what I start off with is not necessarily what I'm going to end up with, but my grand plan is is to have Caustic Arrow for the one that I don't break. <laughs> so if I break my Bone Shatter Juggernaut and I have to, you know, like you have to uh, regret orb everything away, that sucks. That gets expensive. And then you're with a broken build and you can't map. So I don't want to end up with that. 
So that's why I want to just have my caustic arrow off to the side. It should be a quick game. Uh, that one should be fast, like movement speed fast, so I can blaze through the campaign. I think that's the one I want to go through the campaign with, but either one of these three would work fine. And then finally is the Scion. And from what I gather, once you've unlocked the Scion, it's account wide and it's always available. So I think, I don't think I have to go unlock it again for subsequent starts. So I, I think, I've never tried it, but I think once I start up, what, Friday when we get the, the new league, I think I'll be able to just go ahead and start Scion. So I think I'm just going to get all three of them up to the, the first area there. And then the Scion, I want to take and do an armor stacker with or attempt an armor stacker. Now, I'm going to need some specific uniques. So I need a replica Dream Feather. And this is the only, well, there's a couple of these that I really need to focus on specific content for. And the replica Dream Feather for my armor stacker has to come from Heist. That's the only place it comes from. So I am going to have to figure out where Heist is on this list. Uh, and we're going to have to go into a bunch of this. So there's this node here, this section here, 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 and up here. So that looks like about it. I'm not sure if that's how everything was this league or not, but I'm going to have to spec into all this at some point. I don't know if I want to do this early or not because heist could be a good leveling mechanism, but then you're not opening up uh, Atlas points if you do that. So I'm not sure, but heist you can go in anywhere with and same thing with Delve. I like the idea of Delve, but in leagues past where I wanted to focus more on Delve, I need this specific weapon that comes out of heist. So heist needs to be one of my higher priorities um, to get to. So I'm going to try to get three level 90s or 95 characters out of this and then start working on all the content from there. When Heist comes in, I'm not sure, but it's going to be early on. So a bunch of the uniques that I need for all of my builds can just be found, like the Aegis Aurora. I don't know. I, I have to figure out if there's a better way of getting it and stuff like that. But there's that, the Alpha's Howl, the Doriana's Prototype, Calm Spirit, March of the Legion's Boots, Immortal Flesh, Lightning Coil, Taste of Hate, Tanuahi, Fourth Vow, Cold Iron Point Dagger, and Ancestral Vision. Those are all the different builds. That's from the armor stacker, various armor stacker builds that I've looked at, the Caustic Arrow, Bone Shatter, and Exsanguinate. So that's like a mixture of everything. What I do need to start working on is Legion, and that is for the Timeless Jewel. The Brutal, I'm sorry, Brutal Restraint, Timeless Jewel. So I believe that all comes from here. And you get timeless jewels from Legion. Now, one thing that they have changed is where you get your five-way map device from, and that is tier 17 maps. So in this league, I prioritized Legion kind of early on. It was like the third or fourth thing that I went into. Say, like in this league, I went into uh, Essence first. I came up basically through here, Expert Reconnaissance came up say up this way here and then came up and started picking up the essence amplified energies up here and what do we got essence over here with crystal uh resonance there and then there's some more oh they've moved it because it used to come up here so they've moved this essence down to here so i used i went through and basically picked up all the essences first because i for essence crafting so Essence Crafting is probably the first thing I would do and then come into Kirok Mission. So probably something along the lines of uh, if, if I was to do a demonstration of it. Like I said, this isn't necessarily what I'm going to pick day one, but it would be something along the lines of this. Basically shoot up the middle here, pick up this Expert Recon so you get the Atlas Scouting Reports, hook around the corner here, go pick this up. And then we would need to go grab these Essence. I would probably pick all of these up. I don't care for picking these two up. Uh, drop an additional rare item with Essence modifier. I don't really pick those up. I think those are, they're, they might be good for gearing or something like that, but I don't worry too much about them. I pick up the rest of these though, because these all seem to have some really good stuff with them. So then I would come over to here and pick that up. And that would kind of be how I would start off is just pick up all that essence stuff. So there's 40 maps and 
Right out of the gate, I don't worry too much about Kirok missions at this point because everything is brand new. I'm not really trying to blast the maps and have a hundred and some maps all done in the first day. I, I'm not that speedy of it. I just take my time and enjoy it. So I would be more clearing the maps, leveling up, finding essences, stuff like that. That's my main goal is right off the bat use the, the scouting reports and whatever and go through there. One thing I did find out is that you can actually get higher tier maps through Kirok missions. So this league, I need to like, so if you have say a tier, a yellow map that's in uh, uh, whatever tier that is, I can't remember off the top of my head, but whatever tier of maps are, if you're in the white maps, you can have the potential. Uh, I thought I've seen this and I, I saw somebody else mention it too that you can actually get Kirok missions that have a tier four map or five map, I guess it would probably be a tier five map that's actually from higher up into it, it, but it's just a tier five map. So you actually get the clear for it as long as it meets the criteria. So if it's corrupted or if it's uh, uh yellow or whatever, the lead uh, rare, <laughs> I keep wanting to say legendary, but if it's a rare map, like you can, get the credit for it for completion on it as long as it meets the criteria. So if it's rare corrupted, but it's only tier five, it still counts if you're doing a map that's up in the tier 16 level. So I want to spend more time focusing on Kirok missions this time, prioritizing those, trying to work on that. Now I would, at this point, now that I've got all these up here, I would be starting to look at coming down here to planar tactician. And actually, you could come down here fairly easily, that coming through Einhar stuff. I don't know that I would do that, though. I would actually come down this way here and come through here just because that gives me 2% chance, you know, additional uh, interconnected ma maps and stuff like that. That's that's what I would rather come through here for. This I didn't think about using PoE Planner for this, but this thing actually picks a path for you. And this is two nodes shot or you gain one more node by not going this direction. And I would have just gone off of here. So this thing actually is like a little GPS finds you the, the quickest route. I don't really want Einhar on my maps that much. So I would be skipping that. And this is kind of first week. This is where I would end up. This is what I think is going to happen. And then at some point I would come down here to solidarity to get more scouting reports and stuff like that. So that's kind of how my starting map would typically look. So getting back to the uniques that I need real quick, we'll, we'll look at week one here. That's kind of what I'm thinking about. Uh, we would need to go into Legion first, the brutal restraint. So that means coming all the way over to this side of the, the map or this, yeah, this side of the Atlas tree. I would probably not do that. Heist is all on this side. Where's the heist stuff at here? Um, heist. Nope. There. So from here, like I could peel right off of here and go pick up Dutiful Soldier. And actually Huck accompanying you on the map when you open the smuggler's cache, that's actually pretty handy. He comes along and he helps do damage and stuff. So from here, I could pick that up. And then we've got more heist over here. So you could easily come off of this thing here and pick this up here. And then we come over here, you come off this and we can go pick up stuff. This one is 12% chance to contain a smuggler stash, which we want. I don't necessarily want all of these. There are some that I don't care about, like uh, agility, deception, or engineering, like these nodes here, physical training, higher education, and finer arts. I think those are more for when you get deeper into heist so, and then you would pick one. I don't think you would like put all of them on. I think you'd probably pick one. So for this one, I would just come over here and just grab these three basic ones here. And then that's it. 71 maps completed. So that's basically half the mapping process done. And then we've got this section here to pick up. And I might prioritize this section over here first. This gives you 4% chance for a smuggler stash. Heist contracts found on your maps are 100% more likely to require level four jobs. Probably not gonna take that. Probably not gonna take the level five one. 
I might take the level three. I'm not sure. This seems like it's more later into the heist part. I'm, I'm not familiar with heist at all, so I don't really know. But this doesn't seem like something I would want to start with. As for the heist stuff that's up here... 10% chance to contain blueprints for each smuggler's cash. This probably seems like it might be useful. Drop blueprints, stuff like that, fully revealed. These would probably be something I prioritize. So then we're at 85. So that's pushing really far into the mapping section. I don't know that I want to be working on heist at this moment or this fully invested into heist at this moment. So I might not go to these links here. I'd probably ditch all of this. This gives you a 4% chance for heist. So I could see myself taking this because it's got chance for smuggler stashes, chance for Huck to be on the map, things like that. At this stage with 66 nodes spent, I would be looking for building up my map stash or building up my uh, uh, smugglers caches, the, 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 whatever you get off of these things, the blueprints and all that stuff. I'd be looking at building up that. And that seems like a valid strategy coming in, basically starting off going into essence, then Kirok, and then going into the smugglers caches to get that stuff and to just build up my stash of, um, stuff to run later. You know what I mean? And, and try to run some of the heist stuff as I go. Cause I still need to really learn heist and then figure out what some of the rest of this stuff means. Now, from there, one thing, one thing we do have with this league that we don't have with leagues past is the option of using three different Atlas trees. Now, I don't know what you have to do to unlock them yet. I've not seen that part come up. But this is where I would start looking at setting up another Atlas tree for other things. So... This Atlas tree would be set up for like what you're seeing right here. I, I would probably gear this one up for leveling, clearing maps, getting heist materials, essences, stuff like that. That's what this one would go for. And that's where this one would pretty much line up for. The second one that I would probably do is one to start working towards bossing. And I need to make sure and clear out Eater of Worlds and Exarch both. So at some point when I get far enough in, this is, you know, once I'm into the red maps and stuff like that are fairly geared, I'm going to have to, you know, you know when the, the bossing comes in, it's fairly later on. I'm going to be looking at farming Black Star or Infinite Hunger for the Eternal Struggle Onyx Amulet for my Armor Stacker and Exsanguinate build both. They both use that. Eater of Worlds has the Melding of Flesh Cobalt Jewel, which is for the Armor Stacker. And then the Elder, which I think I've killed the Elder, so he's got a Watcher's Eye. I need to farm him. Shaper, I can't remember. There's one of them that I haven't killed, but Shaper's got the Dying Sun, which is used in the Caustic Arrow. That's like the, one of the only Caustic Arrow ones that's difficult to get. I don't know that I need it, but it would be kind of cool to get. So I'd like to, I'd like to focus my... Uh, and this is why I want to do armor stackers. I'd like to focus more on bossing this league than I have previously. Don't know that I'll kill the shaper, but whichever one elder or shaper, whichever one I haven't done, it's not a required one, but it would be nice to have. And then the big one is Cyrus. I've never killed him. My, uh, armor stacker would need thread of hope. So I need to get that off of him. So I would be looking to get into farming him and basically, I would try to get something that kind of comes up to either, you know, fill out whatever here and, and I don't know, fill in all these to get up into the Conquerors, the uh, Synthesis, Shaper and Elder, stuff like that, the Maven and the Exarch. However, I wanted to do all that. And I would probably do Exarch first, maybe. And this could, yeah, I don't know. This could come off the other Atlas tree that I was showing off too. Because Exarch's basically on this side of the house. So I could certainly go up this way, kill off the Exarch, get that done, and farm him for what I need from him. Well, actually, I don't need it from him. I need it from the... Well, the Black Star is not part of the Exarch, is it? Or is it? I can't remember. I can't remember if that's on the way to Maven or if that's on the way to Exarch. Either way, I need to do some farming in there. 
But at some point, I'm going to have to swing over to Legion, and I don't know where to fit that in. But um, early goals are going to be essence monsters. At some point, I could see doing a lot of scarab stuff. Uh, where's all the little scarab thingies on here? There's a ton of scarab nodes in here. And this is something that, and they moved the rogue exile stuff around too a little bit because I thought some rogue exile stuff was up here. But where is that? I'm totally blind. Can't see it. I know there was some around here. Scarabs. So they put scarabs all over the place. There's some up here. So scarabs found in your maps are more likely to be less common varieties. Uh, final boss in each map has 25% chance to drop an additional scarab. More scarabs. Like there's a ton of scarab stuff on here. Uh, scarabs dropped are 100% more likely to be anarchy. Here's cartography ones. Here's reliquary scarabs. So like you can target farm specific things. Here's some over here for uh, increased chance to drop. Uh, rare monsters have 50% increased chance to drop scarabs per monster modifier affecting them. That, that's pretty cool. And then what do we got over here? Essence scarabs, beyond, torment. I like there's so many ways to target farm on here. Ambush, harbinger, domination. Where else do we got? There's this over here. 12% increase. Now, this is one I might pick up off of my essence farming because I'm going to have to come up past this scouting report. Could definitely come up here and get the skittering swarms along the way. And then there's this one here. If I'm going to the essence part down here, this is right along the way too. Unique monsters have 200% increased chance to drop scarabs. So early farming with all the essence and stuff that I was looking at and all these scarabs, that's going to be totally worth it. So that's going to be really cool. I'm, I already mentioned the Kirok stuff. At some point, I'm going to, and this might be my, so I'll have the, the gearing Atlas tree, then I'll have the bossing Atlas tree, and then I'll, maybe, maybe this is the way to look at it. I'm going to have the left side uh, Atlas tree or Atlas map, which is going to be essences and stuff like that, scarabs, all this kind of stuff going off the left side, uh, heist and everything and then there will be the right side atlas uh tree which is going to have betrayal on there and then we're going to have legion like i would probably do betrayal and legion i love having betrayal early on for all the uh, unveils you get legion i need timeless jewels uh, those i could do early it'd be nice to be collecting that stuff then i could get some breach stuff in there because i've neglected the breach bosses every league i didn't really think about them all that much in time past and that also brings up Abyss. You know, I could be on the right side for that. Delve is on the right side. So if I ever wanted to dip into Delve, I'd be kind of in the neighborhood for all that. Harbingers are on this side, I think, too. Uh, there's a bunch of Abyss over here. Where's the Harbinger stuff at? And I see Harbingers are kind of right there. There's only three of them. They haven't added anything. And I really liked having Harbingers. Those were good for currency. Those were good for getting all the little ancient orbs and stuff. A lot of the things that I want are going to be uniques that you can re-roll or you can chant. So I want to get those ancient orbs coming off of that. So even maybe the the left side, I could tip over or dip over here and grab some of these on the, the left Atlas tree for all my gearing stuff. I don't know. There's, there's options there. And that's why I say I don't really want to just start planning exactly this node on this day at this second because that's just that's a little too much for me uh strong boxes are always a good option i liked running secret operation and tamper proof this this league uh secret compartments not that one tamper proof and these were corrupted i may not do that one again tamper proof i all your maps are at least rare which is great but then they're also corrupted and you get a lot of corrupted six link which is I didn't find it all that useful. I kind of didn't care for all that much. So maybe I'll take that one off the list. But Secret Operation, I liked. Now, I say that, but with all the Scarab action we've got going on, I probably, I may not just not even mess with Strong Boxes this league at all. The Currency Nodes. Uh, there used to be some Currency Nodes over here. Did they take that out? It looks like they dropped that. I don't see those anymore, so maybe they took them out. That's unfortunate. was like right here or here, probably where these scarabs are. Oh, well, guess I can't talk about those. 
unless they're moved somewhere. But they were basically like getting map currency and stuff like that. They were kind of cool. Probably not needed anymore. Uh, so I'm not going to worry too much about those. The big one that I, I don't really know how to fit in is going to be all of the Necropolis stuff. Like these are going to be... I need to see how the Necropolis League goes first and how much I enjoy it and how much I want to interact with it because it's all over the place. Like if you look at this thing, there's Necropolis over here. There's Necropolis here. There's some over here and over here. So it's in basically every corner. So I'm going to have to see how this goes before I decide on what to do with that. Like, do I want to do, do all Necropolis stuff for a while? Maybe I redo my Atlas tree. The other thing I'm not sure of is how the Atlas passive points work. Like if you uh, take a point away, does that take, does that give you a point to remove off of each one of the trees? And then like, so if I build up five, uh, uh, um, unmakings and I, or if I spend five or uh, unmakings on tree number one, does that mean tree number two and tree number three all also have five un, unmakings or do I have to use an orb of unmaking on each, uh, tree setup? I, I'm not sure how that's supposed to work yet. If you use one and it's available for all three maps, that'd be great. Cause then you could just bank a whole bunch of them up. You make a lot of changes on one and just try to get the other two to be more stable. And then you don't have to unmake a lot of them unless you really wanted to unmake one of them. You'd have, and then you'd have a bank of it built up. So I, I don't know how that's going to go. The other thing is, is the five way map device. I don't really find myself using it all that much. And the, the, from what I understand, they've moved it to, you have to defeat a tier 17 map now before you get that. So you don't have to go through, which kind of makes sense. Cause I didn't really know it was in Legion and I found that out like after I found that out this league, I think, and I put it into effect and yeah, great. I get it. Or I found it out at the very end of last league. So I used it this league. Now they've moved it to tier 17 map. So now I got to find a build that can do that. Uh, and then I'm going to round this video out here by just talking about a few things that probably won't be on my Atlas tree at any point. Harvest. These are going to be optional ones. Harvest, I could see putting some points into at some point, but optionally, it, I typically get enough harvest juice for no more than I use it. Like I'll swap some things here and there, but for no more than I use it, what I find just randomly on the map seems to be adequate. Bestiary, I'd like to do some of that. Uh, I've farmed some of this here. I like Einhar for uniques and stuff like that. You can get some cool stuff on there, but once again... I get a bunch of it from just general mapping, so I don't know how much I'll actually go into it. Same thing with Blight. I get a lot of oils from just generally mapping, and you find Cassia on the map, so that's good. I want to put some time into Ultimatum, but I also found out that you can get Scarabs that kind of force oil, uh, Catalyst to come out. So I'd like to actually get Catalyst. I, I really liked when I, when I found Metamorph previous league, in Trial of the Ancestors, I really spent a lot of time on uh, Metamorph, got a lot of Catalysts out, and upgraded all my jewelry and stuff there. I liked that. And then this league, it's been completely lacking because Ultimatum is kind of flat. I, it's a, a lot of time for very little reward. It looks like they've re fixed that, so I may bump Ultimatum up a little bit somewhere in there. But Ultimatum's on the left-hand side, and I don't know where that's going to fit into my plans just yet. I need to see how that all works. And then there's all the ones that I'm going to skip. Beyond, Valside Areas, Sanctum, Delirium, Incursion, Expedition, Labyrinth, and Ritual. I put points into those in previous leagues. I don't think I'm going to bother with any of that. You'll get some of it as you run the maps. You'll get... I don't ever use these blockers. I don't like them. I saw Zizarin, uh multiple times he's mentioned that if you, I think it's Zizarin, if you put a blocker in place, you're basically wasting a point and you can just ignore the content if you don't want to do it. Uh, the one cool thing about this is that it has your map. If you do put a point here, it gives you 2% chance to contain other content. So you can laser focus on content if you want and get rid of stuff. 
But if you block one of these, you're not going to get scarabs for it and stuff like that. I'm not really enthused by that. I prefer to just see the content and say, yeah, I don't feel like doing that right now and move on. I don't feel like I'm wasting anything. I just feel like, oh, okay, I don't feel like doing that right now. And then I go somewhere else. And I, that's why I'm getting out about like um, harvest and blight and stuff like that. I never really feel like putting points into it because what little bit I do run, I, you know, I'll see uh, harvest and I'll just go check it out. Uh, I think Zizzerin, once again, he had a good tip. If you go in there and you see that they have the blue monsters, you go get it, you go kill that uh, farm off in the harvest part because that's going to give you the the um, materials for crafting. Uh, whatever that's called. It's not oils. That's blight. Whatever comes from harvest, the different juice. So, but if you go in there and you don't see that blue tag on there, you just ignore it and move on. You just come back out. So I, I've been putting that into practice. And, you know, you're guaranteed to get them on the blue monsters. You're not guaranteed on the others. So if you just skip the others, you don't have to put any points into it unless you really want to get a specific color out of it or something like that. Then I'll go into heist or I'm sorry, not heist, but uh, harvest or something like that. But um, yeah, I think that kind of covers about where I plan on being. Now, at some point I do want to go into breach because there are breach bosses and I really want to get those down. That's something I did not do this league. And now I'm starting over with new builds trying to get those back up i need to front load my league with the content that i want to do and let me just say on bossing this is something i slept on if you are new to path of exile uh don't sleep on this like i have and that is the bossing portion of it so i play ssf which means i have to get everything myself and i I've occasionally got, I think I've gotten one empower gem at some point, but I, and a couple of awakened gems, like I've really never gotten that much and I could never figure out why. And it's like, well, I play all this. The problem I think as I understand it now, maybe I'm wrong and somebody will correct me down below if I am, but I think I need to be spending a lot of time with all the bossing, the Maven, the eater, the Exarch, the elder, the, all this stuff, synthesis, I think I need to spend a lot of time with that content because that's where the Awakened Gems are. So basically, as I understand it, you're going to fill out your passive tree as you level up to 90, 95, whatever you're at. And then you're going to gear up on red maps, you know, tier 16 maps. You're going to get your item level 85 gear. So that gets you, you're leveled up. You, you've got your passive tree. You've leveled up. You've started getting gear and things like that. Then you go into the bossing section and get the upgraded versions of some of your gems. At some point, you're going to go into uh, do lab runs and get the, the different versions of the different gems, the transcendent gems or whatever they are, all that kind of stuff. But then at some point, you need to spend time on the bossing portion of it, which is something that I've really neglected in these last few leagues, and I need to correct. I need to spend time doing the bossing portion because that's where you get the higher tier uh, gems and that's what's going to let you clear more content and level up to go do like the harder bosses and stuff like that so that's where i want to spend some time and that's why i was thinking i would have my third atlas tree would be nothing but bossing and stuff like that and when i get into that point that's what i'll do is i'll just put all my nodes into the bossing section and then i'll work on bossing for a little while and then go do something else. I love the idea of having three different Atlas trees to choose from. And then you can tailor it however you want. You can have one for materials, one for whatever, and then one for bossing or something like that. That's how I think I'm going to set mine up. Uh, so I love that. So that is basically how I am looking at planning out my league for the most part, the first month or so, something like that, somewhere in that neighborhood. Now, at some point, I'm going to get bored. I'm going to go crazy and try all kind of different stuff. Maybe I maybe I get sucked into this Necropolis content. And I just go all the, all in on this, and I go to the four corners and pick all that. I, I don't know. I can't tell you. Uh, all I can tell you is that when I start playing and I get my character built out, and then I kind of hit a wall, and that wall is usually because I'm not doing the bossing to get the higher-tier uh, skill gems. So 
That's what I want to correct this league because I'll get up to 95, level 95, 96, whatever, get every, get everything to that point, and then I stall out because I can't quite get any further than that. And that's where I think I'm running into the ceiling is that I'm not doing enough bossing. I tried doing that this league, but I spent so much time messing around with Bone Shatter Slayer, Bone Shatter Juggernaut. You know, like I tried all these different builds. I wasn't happy with the, the Slayer version of that. And then I got happy with the Bone Jug. But by that time, I was kind of just, I'd spent so much time tinkering around. I kind of got lost in where I was at and I didn't get to where I needed to be. So then I started to realize where I needed to be and, now I'm planning for next league to try to get there. So anyway, that will do it for this video. God, I can't wait for this next league. This is going to be awesome. Next weekend is going to be jam-packed. That will do it for this video. We will catch you on the next one. Take care.